Good morning everyone. Can you guys hear me? Yes sir. Can you see my screen also? Yes sir. Yes sir. All right. So let's make a start. Um, so, so far you guys should have finished, should have finished writing um, up to 1.10. Um, so that means you'll be making another video. Your, um, see, your deadline or your submission date will be next week. So even though you're supposed to complete it by now, I'm still giving you time. You guys should know by now, I, I give you a reasonable amount of time to complete your work. So, I'll post the instructions in classroom and in your WhatsApp group so you will know exactly what you're doing. Today, we are finishing off our um, We're finish off, finishing off the topic for the term, which was fundamentals of hardware and software. We're at the last chapter, 1.11, computer, common computer hardware problems. So basically what we're looking at today is when we run into issues with our computers or maybe our printer or some sort of device, how can we troubleshoot that device to get it back up or running or to figure out why it is not working so that we can implement some sort of solution whether it's to we have to buy another device or we can do some sort of quick fix and get it back up and running something of the sort so the first thing we're looking at is troubleshooting basic computer problems. We shall start from the bottom of the list. Varshini, could you read for us? We're not hearing you, Varshini. A number of simple problems can be solved using a computer, but a few checks can be performed to identify the possible causes. These checks can determine whether the problem can be rectified immediately or if they may be a need to seek further technical assistance. Right. So, as I mentioned before, there are a series of steps that you would want to follow when you are troubleshooting something. So, whether that your computer or some other device, you follow these steps and then you'll be able to see if the steps can rectify the problem or if you need to get someone who can resolve the problem for you. So, computer, laptop, or mobile device not respond, does not respond when power is turned on. So, you press the power button and nothing is happening. How do you resolve that? Saskia, can you read for us? Computer, a laptop, or mobile device does not respond when power is turned on. One, ensure that the power cable is connected to a computer, to the computer, to the power connector on the back of the computer, or device, and or device and plug into the electrical outlet. Two, if it is plugged into a power strip or surge suppressor, check that the power strip is connected to an outlet and turned on. Three. Make sure that the electrical outlet is working. This can be done by testing it with another device, such as a monitor or a printer. Pause there. Thank you. So, 
common issue that a lot of persons come across. They're pressing the power button on their computer and nothing is happening. So you have a desktop, any, any sort of electrical device. You're pressing the power button, nothing is happening. Why? Simple solution, it's not plugged in. So it's not getting any power, so it will not turn on. So that's the first step you should check. Any device that is not coming on, ensure it is first plugged in, that the card is getting power, um, the outlet is getting electricity, that, that's the first step, ensuring you have power. Now, the second step is, so this is also for laptops. So even though a laptop may have a battery inside of it, um, if the battery is dead, then obviously when you press the power button, it won't turn on. So if you have a laptop, if you have a phone, some sort of device with a battery inside of it, you're turning it on, you're pressing the power button, it's not coming on, you put it to charge. You charge it for a good um, half an hour to an hour, ensure that it's completely charged, and then you try again to turn it on. Don't expect a dead device to turn on right away as soon as you plug it in. It doesn't happen all the time. The second step is if it is plugged into a power strip, surge protector, ensure it is turned on. So not only does it have to be plugged in, but you have to ensure all of the switches are turned on. If it's a switch on the computer, um, desktops have a switch at the back of it, um, a power switch, an on and off switch. If it is off, your computer will not turn on. If you're plugged into a surge protector, it has to be turned on in order for you to get power. Three, make sure that the electrical outlet is working so you can test it with another device. If you know a device is working, um, like if your phone, your phone charger, um, that is a good way to test. If your phone's charger is working, you plug in your phone, you see if it is charging to know if the outlet is giving you power. So that's basically the first steps. Ensure you're having power and everything is turned on. Sahid, could you read four and five? Sahid? Ryan. Yes, sir. Could you read four and five? Briefly bypass the surge suppressors, power strips, and extension cables in turn, which connect the computer directly to the power outlet to verify that the computer turns on. Try using another power cable that is suitable for the device. If the power turns on, then the cable needs replacing. Good. So, if your computer, whatever device you're using, if it is plugged into a surge protector and you know the surge protector is on, the power strip is on, yet you're still not getting any power, then bypass the power strip, the surge protector, by plugging directly into the outlet to ensure that you are getting power. But basically, you can test to see if the power strip is giving you power. You can test the outlet to see if it's giving you power. And you can um, take those out of the equation to know what is working from not working. If that still is not the case whereby you bypass the surge protector you plug it into the outlet still no power then obviously you would have next um, check the cable is the cable working so it's just like your phone you plug in your phone to charge um you see your phone is not charging what do you do you try another cable so same with your computer your computer is not turning on any device is not turning on 
you try another cable if you check the power to see that it is working or not working. So that's how we troubleshoot computers, laptop, and any sort of mobile device. Next is printer problems. Robert? Printer problems. One, ensure the printer driver is installed on the computer. Two, ensure that the printer is plugged into a power strip or outlet the printer and the printer is turned on. Three, check that the paper is not stuck in the printer. Open the printer and remove the components that hold the paper. You may need to remove the ink or toner cart cartridge to see if the paper is stuck under the cartridge. You may see an error message on the monitor or the printer lights may indicate that what the error could be. Good. So now we are troubleshooting printers. We're trying to figure out how we can resolve any printer issue. So just like the devices, um, I think number two should have been number one. Just like any other device, ensure that your printer is powered on in the first place. You follow the same steps as before. Troubleshoot the power. Check to see if the cable is working. Once your printer is turned on, then that means the printer is fine in terms of being um, powered on. Now, the next step, other than your uh, pr from your printer being uh, powered on, is for you to verify that it is connected to the computer. So you ensure that um, the cable from your printer is connected to your computer or that some printers today are using Wi-Fi. So you ensure that it is connected through the Wi-Fi. Whatever means you use to connect the printer, you ensure it is connected to the computer. Now, along with connecting to the computer physically or by Wi-Fi, the first step is what you need to do next. You need to ensure that your printer driver is installed. When we were looking at software, we would have looked at this type of software called a driver. And anyone remember what a driver is used for? What is software driver? What is it used for? Sure, it's used for programming interfaces. Programming interfaces. For control and management. That sounds like a more high level um, definition. Looking for something more simple. So basically the driver is used to assist with the communication between the printer and the computer. It's like a software that helps the two devices to communicate with each other. So it's basically what you install when you are connecting the computer, um, the printer. So when you, when you install a printer, you also install the driver so that your computer can communicate or talk to your printer. That driver is like a translator. It tells the computer how it can talk to the printer and what instructions it can give and so on. So that is why, and it also helps to recognize the printer. So if you do not install a driver, your computer will not detect the printer. If you install the wrong driver, it will detect the wrong printer. Each printer has its own driver. Now today, um, if your computer is using Windows 10, you don't have to worry so much about installing drivers because the computer does that automatically, even from Windows 7, but it's a lot more easier with Windows 10 when it comes to automatically installing these drivers. So that's why 
when you buy a printer or when you buy any device, you can simply plug it in and it will work because it's doing all of that setup in the background for you. The third step, so you have your printer powered on, you have your printer connected, um, the driver is installed, it's um, connected with um, the cable or Wi-Fi, whatever the case. Now, you're still not getting to print because something could be physically wrong with the printer. So, the first step, if everything is okay with your printer, is to check to see that it does not have any paper stuck inside of it. So, obviously, if it has a paper jam, then you won't be able to print anything because a paper is stuck inside. It's not allowing anything to pass through. So you simply open up the printer the same way you would open it to put in the cartridge and you check to see if there is any paper that is stuck inside of it. You gently take your time. If you see a paper, you gently take your time and pull on the paper. Remember, paper is paper and paper will tear if you pull it too hard. So you don't want a case whereby you're ripping out the paper and then you leave in pieces of the paper inside of the printer. So you gently take your time and you pull on the paper so that all of it can come out and not leave any pieces inside which can cause more paper jams later on. So you open the printer, you remove the components that hold the paper and you may need to remove the ink and the toner depending on the um, type of printer. If you see an you may see an error message on the monitor and the printer lights may indicate the error could be. So if your printer has lights, um, depending on the combination of the light or the color of the light, that would indicate what kind of error message it is. So you just have to go on Google and say HP printer flashing orange light. And they will tell you exactly what the flashing orange light is means or if you see an error message on the screen that the printer has error message 404 then you go on google you type in hp printer the exact model of your printer hp laser jet um, 5000 error message 504 and they tell you exactly what it means so that you you now know what is the issue to resolve your printer problem? Any questions so far? No, sir. No, sir. So the next one is printer receiving power but is not printing correctly. Ritisha. Printer is receiving power, but it's not printing correctly. One, ensure the printer contains one or more ink cartridges or that the correct toner is installed. Two, if the print quality is poor, the ink or toner cartridge may need to be replaced. Three, ensure printer settings for ink cartridge, ink cartridge Alignment, paper orientation, margins are correct are correctly set. Four. If the print quality is low, check the print quality being used. Options are provided to set the quality and best are example quality, set the quality of print being used from the printer. Draft, normal and best are examples of print quality you may see for an inkjet printer. Five. Some printers use Wi-Fi, so check on the display panel to see if the printer's Wi-Fi is connected. Good. So let's take it step by step. Your printer is receiving power, but you're getting to print, but it is not printing correctly. It's Some issue is happening when you are printing. So the first step is to ensure that your printer has the cartridges installed or it has the toner installed. 
So some printers, they require, like your laser jet printer, they require cartridges inside of all of the, um, the cartridge slots that they have. So if your printer has two cartridge slots, um, one is color, one is black, the printer would require cartridge in both of it in order to be able to print. So even if the cartridge is empty, your color cartridge is empty and only you're printing black, then it still needs that color cartridge inside in order to carry out the printing. Um, it says to ensure that the correct toner is installed. The toner is for those larger laser jet printers, when you would have looked at that. Um, some may have the same um, size, so they might fit in when installing, but they might not be compatible. So they would not work with the printer. So you just need to ensure that you install the correct cartridge inside of your printer. Second, if the print quality is poor, then you are running low on the ink or the toner inside of the cartridge. So a simple fix is to get new cartridges in order to get um, the best quality once again. Third, ensure printer settings for ink cartridge alignment, paper orientation, and so on. So your printer has to align the cartridge and it basically has to align everything inside all the mechanics inside of the printer with the paper because if it's not aligned then when it's printing the information on the paper you might see it um, diagonally or some slanted form on the paper so in those cases um, Every time you install a cartridge in your printer, you would hear that your printer is making a lot of sounds because at that time it is actually aligning back the cartridge and the mechanics in the printer in order to get the best printing output as possible. Now, paper orientation so this is whether the paper is landscape or whether it is portrait so landscape would be horizontal and portrait would be vertical so and then we have the margins so some printers do not print um, let me see Some printers do not print um, outside the margin. So this is a normal Microsoft um, Word page. And most of you would have used this to type maybe your assignment or your homework. Now, if you notice, there's these white parts here that you basically cannot type anything on. So those are your margins. And these margins are needed because some printers cannot print in this area here this margin area so that's why you need to set the correct margin that's why you don't type all the way to the edge of the page even though it's taking up space we don't type there because we need to go with the margin that the paper can that the printer can print because if we don't do that it will just cut it out and that information will not be on the page now if the print quality is low check the print quality being used so during print there are some options that you can use to set the quality of the print there's three options we have draft normal and best so those can be found when you go to file and print. Let me see if it's set up.
Right. So, printer properties. And when you go to paper slash quality, here you can select the quality of the paper. If you want to print in color, if you want to print in black and white, if you want the best quality, better quality, or a draft. A draft is the lowest quality and best is the best. So if you're not getting the best quality or your quality is poor, you can check these settings here to see if your printer, what your printer is printing at. So it could either be the setting is on a low quality or your cartridge just simply needs to be changed. Now, most of the time, persons won't go so far as to change quality because not a lot of persons know about this setting here. So more than likely, if your printer has low, if your printer is doing low quality, it, just, it could just simply mean that your cartridge is low. Now, lastly, some printers use Wi-Fi. So we need to check that, check on the display panel to see if the printer's Wi-Fi is connected. So you're printing, you're not getting connection. Double check and ensure that your printer is connected. The next one, if no paper is seen, when you try to print um pamela if no paper is seen when you try to print one ensure no parts of the printer are open two check check that paper is correctly placed in the printer three verify that the correct data cable is being used and the cable is connected to the computer and the printer four Ensure that you have selected the correct printer. Several printers may be installed and you must choose the required printer in the print dialog window. Good. So, as I mentioned before, I think step three should have been step one. So basically, you need to start with the most basic step first and then move from that. Check to see if your printer is on. Check to see if it is getting power. Check to see if it is connected to your computer. I think it is, I'm telling you guys to check to see if it's connected, but in order for you to check to see if it is connected, you can click on the Windows icon here and you type in Control Panel. This box will appear. Then you go to view devices and printers under hardware and sound you have this option view device and printers even if you select hardware and sound you will see it here also devices and printers and this shows you all of the devices that you have connected to your computer at the bottom here you have all of the printers that are installed on your computer so notice here, this is my printer that I have at home, HP DeskJet 4620. And to know if your printer is connected, you would see it, you would see it in full color. So notice my HP is grayed out, doesn't have any color. So that would indicate that it is um, not connected. So if you see it in full color, that would indicate that it is connected now if you see um, let me see if I get this to work okay good if you see this green check mark here that is indicating this is the default printer so when you go to print this is the first option that will show up all the time so in most cases when you have a printer installed like my HP I would set that as my default printer so that it would go to this printer to print all the time. But that doesn't mean you can't change it. We get to that just now. So that is how you ensure that your printer is connected by checking the setting to see if it has color and that's how you know it is connected. Now, you know your printer is connected 
ensure no parts of the printer is open so if you've just replaced the cartridge and you went to print and nothing is happening maybe you left the cartridge door open and it's no it cannot print until it is closed next check the paper is correctly placed inside the printer so ensure that the paper is neatly inside of the printer all the way inside of the printer so that the printer can pick up that paper now for these same desjet um, desjet printers if you do not put the paper um, enough into the printer then it will not detect the printer uh, paper and will not pick up the paper so you need to ensure that you put the paper enough into the printer so that it can pick it up once again you verify connection and the last one is to ensure that you select the correct printer so if you go back to word and if you're going to print anything we go to file we go to print and we have this title here printer and in this box here this drop down box is where we will see all of the printers that we have installed on our computer so if you guys had seen what happened earlier i wanted to see the settings for my hp printer but i was on microsoft print to pdf printer so if you want to change your printer or if you if you see that your printer is not printing you need to check to see what printer is being used so whichever one you're seeing in this box here that is the one that is being used so if i want to print to my hp printer i just have to select it and uh, i am now printing to that printer so notice here also it's telling you the status of the printer it's telling me it is offline so that is a good indication also that my printer is not connected to the computer so i will not be able to print to that printer so that is how you check the status and that is how you switch between printers. The next one is printout is blank, Crystal Dan. Um, printout is blank. Number one, change the link, the ink or toner. Cartridge. Number two is if the problem Persist. Seek further technical assistance since the nature of the problem may require an experienced technician or a new printer. Good. So, if you are printing and only the page is coming out, it is a good indication that it could be your ink cartridge is so low that it's not outputting everything. So, you simply get a new cartridge. So, most of these printer problems can easily be solved if you change the cartridge. If you buy a new cartridge and you test it with that new cartridge, then you can determine um, what is the issue with your printer. Because a majority of the problem comes from your cartridge either being low on ink or the cartridge was damaged or it's because you didn't use the printer in such a long time, the cartridge basically dried up. The, the common printer that most of us would have in our home, the DesJet printer, it's liquid ink inside of it, inside of the cartridge. So if you don't use your printer often, um, over time, what can happen is that the ink inside of that cartridge will dry up. So when you go and print, you won't get anything because the cartridge, um, the ink inside the cartridge is dried up. So if the problem persists, then you would seek technical advice because at this point, it's some sort of um, technical issue with the printer, either with the cartridge or some mechanism inside of it that is causing the printout to be blank.
All right, so now we're moving to the monitor. We looked at the computer, we looked at the printer. Now let's look at the monitor. Um, Kezia Wilson. Kezia? Sahid, are you back with us? <clears throat> Sahid? Seems we don't have kids yet. Yeah. Um, Jonathan, can you read for us? Monitor problems. Blank screen. Number one, check the monitor power light. If it is off, then press the button to ensure that the monitor is turned on. If the power light is on, then the monitor has power. Alternatively, if the monitor, if the monitor light is blinking or in a different color, then the monitor may be in power save mode. Press the key on the keyboard or move the mouse. Number two, Check the monitor cable connections. Check to ensure that the monitor power cable is connected to an outlet, power strip, or surge suppressor. Check the monitor data cable if is connected to the computer correctly. Number three, ensure the electrical outlet is working by testing with another device. Good. So, First step with any device, ensure it is getting power. Ensure the outlet is giving you power. Ensure your device is being powered on, the power strip is getting power, everything is getting power. After you would have determined everything is getting power, you can you verify that whether your monitor is being is getting power. Can it turn on? Is it off? Normally your monitor would have a light. So that would indicate if your monitor is on or if your monitor is off. If you don't see a light, you simply press the power button to turn it on. Now, what can happen is that if over time you don't use your computer, or yes, you don't use your computer, what can happen is that your monitor would go into a power save mode. It's the same thing with your laptop. If you don't use your laptop for a while, your display would just turn off. Same thing with your desktop computer, your monitor. If you don't use your computer for a while, it has a setting to turn off the monitor to save power. So in those cases, you simply move the mouse, you press the key on the keyboard in order to basically wake up your computer so that it can wake up the monitor also. All right, so the next one is screen difficult to read, um, Jitanjali. Do we have Jitanjali with us today? Seems not. Arifa, you're up. Arifa? 
Mic not working. Amina. Amina, are you there? Amelie? Very difficult to read. Number one. One through seven may need to be adjusted. Such as color, contrast, or therapy. Number two. Intuitive, no strong sense of humanity, please don't turn me to the mom. Such as speakers and amplifiers. Number three, monitors should be kept away from external homework sources, such as fans and fluorescent lamps, radio. These can cause a screen image to appear to vibrate. Nearby power sources should be turned off to change the screen. Number four, monitors facing a bright source of the light. Such as windows and lights to make images difficult to see. The monitor should be turned away from the primary Good. So, if your screen is difficult to read, that could mean that something is with the settings on your monitor. So, your monitor has settings such as the color you can change, the contrast, the brightness, the saturation, the sharpness, and so on. So, if your monitor is difficult to read the, and you don't know much about the settings, the best thing you can do is go through the settings and reset your monitor. If you go through the settings, there should be an option to reset your monitor to default settings, and that could clear away any of um, the any settings someone may have changed and would have caused your monitor to become unreadable. Two, um, some monitors um, are affected by interference, such as magnetism and so on. So you ensure that devices aren't too close to your monitor if it is unable to be read. Now, that would include fans, fluorescent light, uh, radios, so you ensure that no nearby devices are basically interfering with your monitor. Lastly, monitors facing bright sources of light, such as windows, um, such as the light coming in from your window, would make it difficult for you to see what is on the monitor. So it is best recommended that when you are setting up your computer that you do not let your computer face a window what they would recommend is that you put the computer um, so if your windows to the wall then you put your computer towards that window the back of the computer towards that window Instead of the light reflecting off of the screen of your monitor, it will now reflect off of the back of your monitor. Or even if you have it um, right on, if you have the setup of your computer right underneath your window, then you would have no reflection to affect your reading. Um, give me a second.
Alright, so I'm not finding an example to show you guys. Oh, I think I found one. Yeah. So this here would be a good example. So you have your window in the background and your setup of your computer is basically you facing the window and the back of your computer is toward the window. So that doesn't affect the screen of your monitor or any of your device. So it does not strain you from seeing the content on your device, on your monitor, whatever you are looking at. So the last one is battery problems. Let's have Akilish. Akilish. All right, seems like is not here with us also. Um, Ritesha, you could um, take the next one. Battery problems. For laptops and mobile devices, check the amount of charge in the battery. Move the cur cursor arrow over the battery icon while the laptop is connected to power adapter to view the remaining charge. Battery may need charging or replacing if the laptop or mobile device shuts off when the power adapter is unplugged, the device powers off soon after, the battery icon indicates that, the ba that a battery is not detected or found. Try another card of the same, of the same make and model. If the battery charges, then the power cord may need replacing. So, we are now testing for battery problems. Um, this is for laptops and any mobile device that we have that has a battery inside of it. Our cell phone, our tablet. Now, the first thing we want to do for these devices is to check to see what is the level of battery they have. Um, if we are having problems with them, check what is the battery percentage. If we are checking our laptop, we have this image here. We can simply hover our cursor over this icon here, the battery icon. This icon here. And that will tell us the percentage. It's at 99%. And sometimes it will tell us how much time it has left on our battery. Now, on our on our phone we can easily see the percentage at the top of our phone and most other devices so that's how we can check the battery percentage if our device is cutting off now and then we check to see what percentage it is at now how do we know if our battery needs charging or even replacing one is if our device cuts off when we unplug the device so if as soon as we plugged out our laptop and it cuts off right away then we need a new battery your battery is no longer holding charge so it will not stay powered on now if the device powers off soon after use that's a good indication that either it needs to be charged because as i mentioned before if the device is dead and you plug it in and you try to turn it on, it will not stay on 
because it needs enough power it still needs enough power in the battery in order to stay powered on so that is why you would need to leave it to charge for a, a reasonable amount of time in order to get the enough power in order to stay on even though it is plugged in and lastly the battery icon indicates that the battery is not detected or found so if you look at this image here with the battery icon you see like a little cable next to it and that is indicating it is charging but if you ever see an X or I think in most cases it would be an X that is indicating that a battery is not being detected so if you know to yourself you never took out the battery from your laptop but yet you're still seeing that X on your battery then that is a good indication that your battery is no longer working or it is um, not good anymore so it will not offer um, it's not working anymore you simply need to replace it um, there's something else I wanted to mention about battery and it, I lost the talk right so with the first um, with the first point if your mobile device shuts off when you unplug now another thing you guys can um, take note of is that in terms of battery plug uh, battery problem for any device if you notice that your device when it reaches a certain percentage um, it shuts off that is another indication that you have a battery problem and it would need to be replaced. Um, what happens with this battery is that a certain part of the battery may go bad. So it can still hold charge, but when it reaches that certain amount of percentage, like maybe 30%, 25% and it cuts off, that is when it reaches that bad part of the battery, which has no charge. And that is why it would just shut off just like that. So, like any other device, if your device is not charging or it's not powered on, you try another cable to see if you would get it to work. Now, this is something um, you guys should be careful about when it comes to trying other cables. Now for your smartphone, um, the power isn't that large, so you don't have to worry about um, testing with different cables and power adapters and so on. But when it comes to laptop, that's where you need to be careful. If you and your friend have um, a laptop and it's different um, manufacturer, one is Dell, one is HP, and for some reason the HP laptop is not working and your friends say lend me your um, your laptop charger let me see if it's working do not take the risk you need to find a laptop charger that is similar that has a similar make and model as your HP laptop the reason why is because laptop chargers have different voltage and current capacity so the voltage that comes out of your laptop charger can range from 12 volts all the way to 19 volts the current can range from it has different variations so if you plug a charger into your computer that has a high voltage and a high current that your um, computer cannot support you will damage your computer you will damage your device so anytime you're testing with another charger you always ensure that you are using this um the same make the same model or if you know about science and you like science and you know how to check for the voltage and the, um, the current on a charger you can compare it to see if it is closely related 
and you will be able to use that charger on the device but it's always best to not take the risk and just let someone professional handle that part so let's see these questions so you have been watching youtube videos on your phone for about four to five minutes and your phone from the power is off all right so let's see you have been watching good so i won't let's see these questions here can anyone guess what we will be doing with them can anyone make a guess Is anyone in class? No, sir. Sir, will these questions be the homework? No, we won't be doing homework anymore. So, 1.10 was your last homework. So, that means that is your last coursework. So, whatever is posted this Friday that will be your overall for this term so next week what we'll be doing um, we will review this question here in class and we will review all of the other questions so we can see where we went wrong where we went right and where we can improve so this has brought us to the end of today's class if you guys don't have any questions on today's topic, you are free to leave. Enjoy your lunch. Excuse me. Sir, excuse me, sir. Is the notes being graded?